So, kinematics is the study of moving objects. And in maths, we really limit the scope of moving objects. Your entire um, experience of this will be you have a particle and an origin and all your particle can do is either move right or left. Now, sometimes they'll phrase the question to try and make it realistic, i.e. a car going up and down a street. Um, I think last year in a sat I put a dog in a dog run and it went up and down a dog run. But fundamentally, the particle can move direct two directions, right and left. Unsurprisingly, this is positive and this is negative. Alright. <laughs> and then there are three types of graph. The first type of graph is what we call displacement. Time is always this axis. And then a displacement graph is given ST. And what a particle might do is this. This is going to the right, turning around, coming back to the origin, going to the left, turning around and coming back. So that is me doing this. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, right, question. Is to the right always positive? Or yes. Is yeah, okay. Right is always positive. So, this is ST, S for displacement. Don't get confused with S for speed, ST. Now, <clears throat> what we're interested in is what happens when we differentiate this. Now, if we differentiate this, we get, we can sometimes call it dy dx, or in this case, dy dt. It is rise over run, and in this case here, the run is time, and the rise is distance. And you guys have seen rising distance over time, so change in distance over change in time. The derivative of the displacement is the speed function. More accurately, it's called velocity. So what we would say here is that the particle has a positive velocity, it's moving to the right. Here the particle has a negative velocity, it's moving left. It still has negative velocity, and then it has positive velocity. So the slope of this line is the velocity of the particle. All right, let's zoom in on this first one here. It's a slightly more nuanced time displacement graph. This curve here means the velocity is increasing. You see how the velocity is slightly positive and then gets more positive and more positive? What happens when velocity changes with time? That fancy term is acceleration. If our velocity is changing, we are accelerating. So here, it's concave up, we are accelerating. The second derivative is the acceleration. The first derivative of this is displacement, sorry, this is displacement, first derivative is velocity, second derivative is acceleration. Using calculus, we can tell everything about a particle's journey if we can describe a particle's path with a function. And that's what this will all be about. It'll be describing a particle's path with a function. So this is speeding up to the right, traveling at a constant velocity to the right, slowing down, but still going to the right, and then stopping. So this is the story of that particle moving constantly to the right, but not at a constant speed. All right. So I've included some notes. There is a slight distinction between velocity and speed. And the physics students will be used to this, but velocity needs both a magnitude, so a number, and a direction, positive or negative, depending on which way we're going. Speed is just how fast something is going. So if it is moving towards the left at 12 meters per second or towards the right at 12 meters per second, its speed is the same, 12. But its velocity is different. Positive 12 is different to negative 12. So just be careful if the question asks for velocity or if it asks for speed, it can be asking for subtly different things. It's a 
trap for young players. And there's a few more traps in this. All right, acceleration is often known as AT. It's the derivative of the velocity function, or it's the second derivative of the displacement function. Welcome to All right, let's explore a few graphs. This one here. The particle is moving to the right. Initially, it's moving to the right quickly because its slope is steep. Then it's getting less and less and less fast, but always going to the right. What that means is its velocity is very high to the right to start with. Then it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller until the velocity is zero. What that means is here is zero. Its acceleration is always negative. So a negative acceleration means the velocity is slowing down. And if you took the derivative of this, you would get that. And you guys know that a straight line might be, say, minus 3x. The derivative of that is just minus 3 there. There's this relationship between the three of them. We'll look at a few more. Positive acceleration. <clears throat> the particle starts off not moving and then accelerates to the right, meaning the velocity is getting faster and faster. Velocity gets faster and faster, but acceleration is just constant. You differentiate between each of these. And we'll do more examples of this in a second. I think... Oh, yes? On the next page, there's a few more examples. This one has an error. All right. If uh, we have this first graph as displacement, initially, it doesn't move. It's still one meter away from the origin, the first two seconds. Then between seconds two and four, it changes to, what, five meters away from the origin. And then its speed stays the same, but it's still moving away from the origin until six seconds. If we want to consider the speed of it, its speed for this first portion is nothing. It's not going anywhere. Then its speed increases. And then at this point here, its speed is positive but it's not increasing. So a speed of positive but not increasing should be a line there. They made a mistake here. That mistake implies that the speed will be the same slope as here. Like if it went straight from there, that would be true. But the slope of that is less than the slope of that, so it should be a horizontal line there. So I just tried to correct the error for it. Would the lines be connected? No, they don't have to. They can jump. Um, what I've drawn here is not super realistic because what it implies is that I am moving forwards to backwards with almost no curve in between. Mm -hmm. So in reality, they should be connected, it should be curved, but it's not always realistic. <laughs> All right, let's do a question. And I'm hoping you guys have a ton of space to do this on. in a straight line with position relative to O given by ST, where T is the time in seconds. Find the expressions of the particle's velocity and acceleration and draw a sign diagram for each. All right, so it's using the skills we've done before. We differentiate and differentiate and then do sign diagrams for each. So VT is the same as S dash T. And you wouldn't necessarily write that, and that is going to be 3t squared minus 12t plus 9. <clears throat> I'll do the sign diagram for this one and then we'll go on to the second derivative. If I'm going to do a sign diagram for this, I'll let it equal to 0 and then I'm going to factor 3 out. t squared take 4t plus 3. 0 equals 3. What is it? t take 3. t take 1 we have a sine diagram for t and vt 
where we are interested in the points 1 and 3. And note, I made a side error here. Don't put an arrow there. It ends at 0. And yes, my scale between 1 and 3 is not 3. <laughs> also, quite important. And then we need to find the numbers that fall in each of those points. So we put values in here, here, and here. If I put a half in, negative and a negative make a positive. If I put two in, negative and positive make a negative. And if I put four in, positive, positive, make a positive. What this is saying is the particle moves to the right, stops for a second, moves left, stops, moves right. Each of these zeros is a point where the particle is stationary for a second. Does that make some sense? It might make even more sense if I graph it. So, if I graph the original function, t to the power of 3 minus 6x squared plus 9x minus 1. So this is the original function. What this is saying is that the graph, the particle starts to the left, because it's slightly negative, it starts to the left, it moves past the origin to the right, it turns around, comes back, meets the origin, goes back and here. Note that where it turns, it turns at 1 and it turns in 3. So the slope of this graph is positive, meaning it's moving to the right. At that point it's stationary, it's not going left or right. Then it's moving left, it's stationary, and it's moving right. And we can tell that using the first derivative or the velocity. Now, if we want to sort of <clears throat> work it out, it hasn't asked this, but at what point would you guess is it moving the fastest to the left? Positive slope is moving right, fast to the left is about 2, and that would be our inflection point. So that would be, that's, we know that the slope gets to a minimum here when it's an inflection point, when it goes from concave down to concave up. So the kinematics will start tying in what you're doing in drawing terms of drawing derivatives and all those sorts of work. All right, um, I still define the acceleration function. So the acceleration function, at is equal to either the second derivative of this one or the first derivative of that is going to be 6t minus 12. And the sine diagram <coughs> is going to be something like this. Not an arrow there, a zero there, two here. The sine diagram, that would be equal to zero around two. If we put a one in here, it would be negative. If we put a three in, it'll be positive. So what this is saying is that the particle is accelerating to the left, at 2, it stops accelerating to the left and starts accelerating to the right. What that means is the velocity will probably be slowing down and slowing in and then increasing. But that's something to watch for as well. Alright, find the initial conditions and hence describe the motion at that, this instant. The initial conditions are when t is 0. So when t is 0, if we go into this, st is minus 1. So if we're going to draw, this is called a motion diagram. If we're going to draw a motion diagram, what this implies is that at time equal to zero, t equals to zero, the particle is one to the left. So it's one to the left. And we want to describe its motion when it starts. 
meaning we need to put t equals zero to each of these. If I put t equals zero to here, it's nine, meaning that it starts one meter to the left, moving at a speed of nine meters per second to the right, accelerating at a speed of minus 12 meters per second to the left. So what it's doing is it's starting off moving fast to the right, accelerating this way. And that sounds really strange, but you can think of accelerating against motion as braking, because you're changing your velocity. This is moving to the right, but slowing down initially. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't, does it? Yeah. But for velocity, would you say minus 12 to the left, or would you just say 12 to the left? I'd say minus 12. Okay. It's like... And, and that's acceleration of minus 12, velocity of positive 9. Yeah, no. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, this particle, that is 9 metres per second in that direction. I guess if acceleration is zero, the velocity never changes. So if the acceleration was zero, this would never change. If the acceleration was positive one, what that would mean is that after one second, this would have changed to 10, because we're going up one beta per second. So then if our acceleration was positive from the start, this would get faster and faster. But our acceleration is negative at the start meaning that it's not going to stay 9 metres per second to the right, it's going to slow down. And it's going to slow down every time this was negative because the signs are sort of opposing each other. So is the answer to the B <coughs> is just 9, like hence describe the motion, is it just 9 metres per second to the right? Yeah, accelerating 12 metres per second squared to the left. No. No, we always say accelerating. Yeah. Accelerating negative 12 to the left, or negative 12. Find the position of the particle when it changes direction. All right. It changes direction when the velocity hits zero and then changes. So it changes direction at one second. If we want to find its position, we sub in one second to the original displacement function. So we sub 1 into here. So it's like 1 minus 6 is minus 5, plus 9 is positive 4, minus 1 is 3. What that means is that... If time is 0 and it's here, 1 metre to the left, by time time is 1, it's now 3 metres to the right. And it changes direction and comes back. And then we sub in 3. Oh, I'm going to hate this. 3 cubed is what? 27 minus 6 lots of 3 squared. 27 minus 54 is what? 27 plus 27 minus 1. That works out, doesn't it? Minus 1. So what the particle has done is, it's gone from minus 1 to 3, then back at time equal 0, time equal 1, time equal 3. So we can put the position as 1, 3, and then 3, negative 1. Yeah. For when that changes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Draw a motion diagram. That's what we've just done there. A motion diagram is the times and their position when they change direction. So it's gone this way and gone back that way. For what interval time is the speed increasing? Now for speed to be increasing, you need velocity and acceleration to work in the same direction. So if you're traveling this way and you're accelerating this way, you're gonna speed up. If you're traveling this way and you're accelerating that way, you're also gonna speed up, but in a negative direction. But it still counts as speeding up. If you're traveling this way and accelerating that way, you're slowing down. Same here. So anytime the signs are opposed between velocity 
and acceleration, you're slowing down. Yes? Is that in between the turning point and the, um, like the point of inflection? Yeah, it will be. And we can see it from the sign diagram. So here, it's moving to the right for the first second, but then it's slowing down for the first two seconds. However, at time equals to one, it starts going left and accelerating to the left. So its speed will increase between, what are we at? E. It will increase between one and two, because the signs are the same. So when time is between one and two, and after three, we're now moving to the right and accelerating to the right. On the graph, where did the graph go? I'll try and make that even bigger. Speed is increasing when the value of the slope is getting larger, either larger in the positive direction or larger in the negative direction. What I mean by that is here, the slope might be plus 6. In fact, we know it's plus 9 right at the start. So here, the slope is plus 9, plus 8, plus 7, plus 5, plus 4, plus 3, plus 2, plus 0. So the slope there is 0, but that was speed decreasing. Here, the speed 0. And then it goes minus a half, minus one, minus two, minus three. And you see how that is actually speeding up. The value of it was getting higher. We went from zero to the negative slope. But at this point here, the two, we stopped speeding up and we got less negative. So from a slope of like you know, minus three, we've got minus two and a half, minus two, minus one, zero. So you see how in that portion we weren't speeding up. In this one though, the speed gets faster and faster and faster the whole time and anything beyond three accelerates. The speed's getting faster and faster. And that is why between one and two and greater than three we are speeding up. Why does it include one, two and three? Like why is it... Yeah, it's like, a bit... Why is zero... Do we just have to know that? Yeah, and they do by convention, like for state the interval where the graph is increasing. Yeah. You remember how the textbook included yeah. Yeah. the turning point, and you're like, well, it's not increasing, it's there. Yeah, it's, so it's yeah I'd include those as well. Yeah. Alright, total distance travelled in the first three seconds. Now, note, if you put in, and this is a common error, total distance travelled is different to where is it after three seconds. Where is it after three seconds is putting time equals three into the original function. If we put time equals three into the original function, we're at minus one. So lots of people here would answer minus one, but that's not the distance traveled, that's just where it is. The distance traveled is shown by the motion diagram. We've gone from minus one to three and back again. So the total distance traveled in the first three seconds is eight meters. Because we've gone four that way and four that way, so the answer will be eight. Yeah? Why is it three? That's eight one. Um, yeah. So it turns from moving to the left to moving to the right and three. Oh, sorry, where did I get the three from? Yeah. Sorry. Ignore what I just said. That's from the t equals one here. It's moving to the right and moving to the left. So I was interested in where it was when it changed direction. And I put the number 1 into this function. So at time equals 1, it was 3 metres towards the right. And on the graph, that's saying when time is 1, it's 3 metres to the right. So that's for part C, right? That's for part C of your question? Yeah. Okay. And then when time is 3, it's 1 metre to the left which is the same as where we start. Yep. And what it's asked us to do is work out how far it travelled in the first three seconds, from zero to three. And we're actually at the same place, we're back to minus one, but it's travelled out to three and then back again, so it's travelled a total of eight metres.
often looking at the original graph is quite helpful for these. All right. Um, did you guys want to do another one, or did you want to have a shot at yourself? I'm going to have a shot at myself. Shot at self? Cool, cool. All right.